Hi there. This is Masab Aksako bringing in uh, third year me mechanical engineering uh, studies and uh, walkthroughs and guides to how to solve common problems in mechanical engineering. Uh, as I mentioned, third year problems. Last I left, we were discussing mechanical design 238, a second year unit. Uh, with regards to basic um, equilibrium of forces using Newton's second laws of force equals mass times acceleration over beams. But today, uh, well, this year I'll be moving on to a more advanced topic and it's to do with feedback and its applications to control systems. Um, there'll be a few basic uh, concepts that we'll be going through. Um, Firstly, how to actually derive a transfer function based on a closed loop feedback system, uh, understanding and how to actually calculate the characteristic equation of the transfer function, and then we'll be talking about the stability of said transfer function that has been derived um, via the feedback loop system that we would be uh, given. Now, in an example today, we'll be showing you a um, it's a common closed loop feedback system. Now, in general, a feedback control system can be configured in the form as seen in figure 2. And in this form, um, this is known as a block diagram. And it can be seen that the transfer function, which is actually what the transfer function is, um, first of all, before we actually move on, it is a principal mathematical representation of the system's dynamics. So what the system will do with time and how it responds to inputs. And th that response that I mentioned is what will be given as an output. But in order to consider all variables of a system, you need to have a block diagram in order to actually consider uh, the stability ranges. Uh, as you can see, the K, which is stability range, you can adjust this K. Um, the actual system's dynamics, which is known as G P of S, um, it's just a just a variable name given to the system's actual dynamics and the system's feedback based on the input that you have given it, which is known as H of S, which is just feedback. It's just another variable name given. For example, this problem here, uh, we can actually treat this as an example of a co common control system governing torque output of a um, simple IC engine or internal combustion engine by altering its throttle setting. So that's what I mean by that is, let's just bring this over here quickly. So uh, let's just say I give my combustion engine an input torque. How would my combustion engine respond to said torque and this is the actual combustion engines dynamics okay dynamics so the dynamics in which uh, governs the um, movements of the IC engine is all based on GP of S the dynamics of the combustion engine and the engines actual feedback what you would actually receive from said engine is uh, given here as H of S. Now I won't just I won't dive too deep into the actual engines itself, but I want to talk to you uh, in a general way of actual block diagrams. I'm just giving you a real world example of how you would actually use a block diagram and why they actually are used. So input throttle setting, you have some stability range K that you can adjust for the engine, your actual engine's dynamics and your engine's feedback. And then finally as the loop closes and you create the forward feedback, sorry, forward path and feedback loop, then once uh, said uh, motions are, are completed, then you will receive an output. And this output is very important for us to analyze overall. But in the end, uh, what we'll be looking at today, right now, is not the actual engine example I've just been talking to you about. It's just a basic block diagram example finding transfer function and characteristic equation okay so back to the problem here you're given your block diagram your actual equations are dynamic transfer function equations for the GP of S and H of S and you're asked state the characteristic equation of the closed loop transfer function so to find a closed loop transfer function given 
a block diagram, you first start off with deriving it. Let's just start it off. So close loop transfer function. Every principal equation for a transfer function that is closed loop will follow this exact form. G H over 1 plus G H. Okay? Now G is the forward path. That's G. H is the feedback path. Okay? Now what have I been actually saying here? Let's apply this to our example. So we get K. So K G P of S. That's our forward path over 1 plus the entire completed loop to the summing block here, the summing junction. So we go K of G P of S multiplied by H of S. And this will give us a closed loop transfer function. Oh yeah, sorry, before I mentioned accidentally uh, my initial formula was GH of 1 plus GH. That's incorrect. My bad. Um, it's actually uh, G over 1 plus GH. That's the uh, transfer function of an open loop uh, block diagram. So just ignore that previous statement and follow this uh, derivation and always just memorize this basically. Um, forward path divided by 1 plus the entire completed path. Okay, so let's plug in some numbers and see how we can go from here. So let's just throw this over. Alright, so let's substitute. The closed loop transfer function with the substituted transfer functions um, in them, we'd first have the numerator multiplied by k divided by, as you can see, I'm just substituting g. P of S over here. So moving on, and the denominator is S plus 9. Alright, okay. Now we divide this entire thing, this entire numerator of the closed loop transfer function. No, this is just the numerator. This isn't the denominator numerator. Now we're getting to the denominator of our transfer function. We're just going to substitute each and every single variable. So one, oops, one plus k g p s h s. Okay, so to substitute everything, so just like we did above, so we go zero point two. So we work with the numerator first, k, and then what it was left two. Divide that by the denominator, and everything multiplied by one another. Okay, so I'm just going to do that quickly. Okay. This looks a bit messy, so we need to clean this up. So mathematically, how do you clean up the denominators and numerators so such that it leaves it as a form of numerator over the denominator without f like two different numerators, two different denominators, and just messes the entire transfer function up and doesn't look clear. So in order to analyze this, in order to simplify it, we need to multiply every single term here by what you can see on the numerator of the closed loop transfer function. So on the numerator, this bit, the numerator of the closed loop transfer function. What is on the ah? Uh, my bad. What is on the denominator of the closed loop transfer function? This part. Well, ignore the one plus quickly, and move on to the term on the right hand side. So this term here. You need to multiply every single term in this closed loop transfer function by this denominator here. This one. Absolutely important that you do that such that your simplification is done in a number of steps. Okay? So let's just quickly move on to doing that now. I'll show you exactly what that would actually look like. So, we go, and it's going to look a bit messy now. 0.2k divided by... Okay, so moving on. Uh, sorry, before we actually can uh, conclude this... Uh, derivation of the closed loop transfer function. I want you to proceed to my part two of this section because I only can record 10 minute intervals thanks to YouTube's uploading system. Sorry about that guys. So just please move on to my part two if you'd like to continue my tutorial. Other than that, here you go. Here's the derivation of the closed loop transfer function. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.